Good afternoon, I'm Tom Drost. I'm the co-founder of Estimate Rocket, and welcome to today's success webinar, Managing Profitability with Time Tracking and Expense Tracking. It's the newer, newer features of the enterprise version of Estimate Rocket. An uh, important uh, thing about the webinar before we get started is there's a question box in your GoToWebinar control panel where you can type in questions as we go through the webinar. And I'll answer them all before the end of the session. Uh, Kayla may uh, be working that for me because uh, at the moment my uh, GoToWebinar doesn't seem to be being too responsive for me, but uh, everything else seems to be working fine. All right, let's get started. Um, managing profitability with time tracking and expense tracking. Um, first of all, big part of that, just in general, is managing your profitability. Key, obviously, key to business success is having a handle uh, on your on your projects. Another word for this is job costing. Uh, very important. Job costing allows you to track the profitability of your projects while in progress and uh, after they're completed. The first step to getting control of your project costing, though, is during the estimating phase. Ideally, we want to estimate what our uh, profitability is going to be on the project and then be able to compare that at the end of the project uh, you know, against what we've actually done. So we're going to go through a couple of those steps. And again, just, just a note, um, these, so most of these features are available only in the enterprise version. So um, I'm sure there'll be a few questions about that. Uh, and also, I'm sure some, there'll be some questions about how to, um, you know, how to build up these, these profitability analysis. So I'm going to cover, cover them from a couple bases. So um, if you're using things like the built-in painting templates, uh, the new interior and exterior painting templates, that whole costing part, uh, estimating your cost becomes significantly easier. Um, you, all you need to do is to set your labor price and set your uh, price of your materials and use the templates and it will automatically cost things out for you. I've got a project here that I've already got a line item created on uh, for the first floor. You'll see once you start having estimated costs, you'll see a new line that pops up on the top of your project in the profitability section uh, and it shows estimated. So on this particular project, I've got 110 hours. Uh, total cost of $3,990 and a profit of $3,738 and for a profit margin of 48%. So good starting point uh, that gets us to where we know roughly what we hope or believe that we're going to make in terms of profitability for this project. And this is a, this would be the profits that we're going to talk about are gross profits. So this does not include your overhead if you, uh, which we could have a whole topic on another day, but uh, generally speaking, the profit, the margin that you see here does not include your overhead. So you want to make sure that that margin that you see here or your target margin that you're shooting for includes an overhead number. So it shouldn't be 20 or 15 percent. It should probably be closer to 40, 50 or 50 percent to make sure that you're covering your overhead depending upon what your overhead is. We've recently written some interesting blog articles about figuring out your costs and your overhead and your profitability. Uh, probably worth a read on our website, the blog on our website. Okay, so in this particular case, we, we have an item that's already done. I'm gonna show you this process uh, from the line item up. So let's say you don't aren't using templates at all. If you had to do this manually, how would you do it? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a new line item and I'm just going to add it from scratch just as an example and we're going to call this uh, special service and materials and the unit uh, we may not need a unit for this necessarily because this is just going to be uh, it's going to be a total bundle price uh, and then we get a unit price and a quantity you'll also notice down in the bottom we have a material dollars per unit and a labor minutes per unit. So let's say uh, that, that this special service of materials that we're going to do is going to take us um, two hours. So two hours would be 120 minutes for this service. Now these are your costs for this service. If you don't have the enterprise version you don't even see this cost line. So just if you're looking for that that's where, that's where it is. And then materials uh, for this service that we're going to provide 
are in dollars. So let's say the materials for this particular service are going to be uh, $425. That shows us so far that our cost per unit is going to be $475. So we know right out of the gate that we got to charge more than $475 for this special service and materials. Otherwise, we're going to uh, lose our shirts and be looking for new jobs. So uh, let's. I kind of think you know, 50 per, 40 or 50 percent is a pretty good target. So if we said uh, 50 percent, that would basically be double our cost. So let's say we're, we're shooting for uh, $950 as our unit price. And it, and when you put in the unit price and you're using the costing feature, you'll see that the it actually shows you what your margin is going to be on that particular service. And this, you'll also note, is just on a generic line item. In a few minutes, we're going to explore uh, materials and um, material items and labor items, which will give us a little bit different flavor. So uh, in this case, we have to decide how many of these special services and materials are we going to provide. In a lot of cases, in a simple project where you're just saying, hey, I'm going to do this and this and this for you, there's just the quantity is just going to be one. You're just going to give it a price, give it a quantity of one because it's just really one service that you're going to provide. Give it a number of minutes per unit. So in this case, the quantity is one. So it's 120 minutes for this whole project. And then whatever your total material cost is going to be for this item. And then just going to give it a group name to separate it out. Uh, we could specify it's taxable if we need to or not. I'm going to leave that blank for now and we've created our service. And what you'll notice here is that these hours, these labor hours now estimated have increased from 110 to 112 because we added two more hours of service and our cost has gone up and that cost includes both your labor and your materials. And as you're building up your estimate at any time you can click on the profitability edit and it'll show you what your uh, profitability is so far. And then there's, so there's an estimated column and there's an uh, actual column. So right now we're just looking at the uh, estimated column. We've got hours. We've estimated a total of 112. We've got labor. We've got uh, total labor of $2,800. Talk in a minute about how that's being calculated for the estimated labor. Uh, actually, the estimated labor is being calculated based on the average labor cost per hour. So currently, when you're doing your estimated costs, we use an average labor cost per hour to calculate your profitability. And we recommend for your average labor cost, which is set up in your, your standard average labor cost per hour, is set up in your company information settings. We recommend that you use a value that is your average payroll amount including taxes and um, uh, insurance. So how do you calculate that? Just a, just a quick example. You, I recommend you take probably th a quarter's worth of payroll, maybe even a whole year's worth of payroll costs, which you can get out of your payroll system or from your CPA, and divide that by the number of hours worked. And that will give you your average hourly labor cost. So we're showing a total of $2,800 worth of estimated labor, a total materials of $1,665 for a total estimated uh, sales, cost, profit, and margin of 48.6%. So we don't have any actuals yet. We just have the actual project total in there. So it's showing us that it's a it's 100%. So far, we're doing pretty well. So we can look at that throughout the course, you know, throughout the life of the project. Now, in the case of my, uh, of my interior painting templates and other templates you may be using, and templates that you can create for yourselves, we can make those cost calculations or estimated cost calculations be a little bit simpler. Um, and, and maybe even we'll start with a, with a fresh project just to show you some of those. So I'm just going to open a new tab here. And we're going to create a new project. And we're going to go search for somebody. 
and that's a good one. And we're going to say new webinar project. So when we go to add a line item to a fresh project, you notice that we have a series of templates here. Uh, if we use one of the painting templates, for example, and I'll show you some pre-done examples of that, it would cost it out as it normally would. I've actually created a time and materials template uh, based on labor items and material items. And just to give you a quick example of how that would work is we would give it a name and the name might be uh, install some materials. And then we can simply enter in some hours and materials. So uh, the materials actually would end up being a dollar calculation because I've made the price of this material be a dollar. So we're not putting specific materials in here, but it's a quick way to do a labor and materials estimate. So I might say I'm going to need uh, eight tradesman hours and four helper hours. You'll see in a moment how those are going to look. And maybe it's going to cost uh, uh, $245 worth of material. So we're going to save that. And what that creates in my project is quite a bit of thing, quite a few things. So first of all, it gave us our line item with a total of eleven oh five, eleven eleven hundred dollars and five dollars, and that includes the labor for the tradesman, the helper, and the material. And what you're seeing now is that this template has actually created a an assembly line item. So it's a line item made up of some other line items. These subline items or hidden line items will never show to the customer if they're only internal internal to your project. And down below you'll see some other information that the customer will never see. You see two labor items, a labor for tradesman says we need 8 hours and a labor for helper for which says we need we're going to need 4 hours. And then finally it says we're going to use 245 uh, units at a dollar of materials or $245. This is simply a way to get your material costs into your project, especially if you don't have a specific detail of materials at this point that you're going to use on the project. So, quick way to, you know, get your cost, get, do your pro, do your uh, proposal, your estimate. Also, a quick way to get estimated hours, costs and profit into your project for analysis. Again, some of the other templates that we have out there uh, already do this for you as well, and we'll accumulate those that information for you. Uh, so next steps to look at here. Um, might be some other examples of how we can get this information in. Um, one of the things I didn't show, show you yet uh, was the painting example. So if I go over to my painting template project, this one happens to be an exterior project. This, this series of line items was created based on this template. Hello, Tom. So you can see from this template, we filled in some values for uh, power washing and scraping and sanding and patch and spot prime siding. Uh, we have a premium for uh, second story labor, et cetera, all those things filled in. And when we save those, what it did was it created for us our line items and also down at the bottom our labor, exterior painting services, 114 hours, and a series of materials. Very, very powerful concept. And finally, it also created for us, and this project already has some actuals in it, which we'll talk about in a moment, also created for us our estimated totals, costs, and profit. So on this particular project, I've, actu I've got some actual costs in there as well. So how did I get those actual costs in there? As the project is being worked and progressed, there are several ways to apply your costs to the project. One is by tracking time. So in our uh, new, in our enterprise version, um, you are, as well as your professional version, but you don't get the full benefit of the costing in the professional version, you can track your employees' hours. So here I've got uh, some hours plotted in for a couple projects. This is what the hour summary for the time tracking looks like. Shows me who's punched in and who's not punched in, 
uh, and each individual employee can punch in and punch out on their own devices. And in this particular case, I've got some time already locked in, clocked in for various people today. You can also enter hours for your employees from this screen. So I can pull up, I can select an employee, I can pick the project that they're working on, and I can specify what they were doing, what kind of work code they were working, and then we can specify a number of hours. So maybe some this guy worked from 9 to uh, 2.30, and you can also apply notes. So in the field, this person could punch in and punch out themselves, but you can also enter these time entries on the hour screen for each person if you want to. Uh, if they forget to punch in and punch out, you can uh, punch them out or in or both, just as I'm doing here. Uh, or if they make a mistake, I'll show you in a minute where you can edit information and, and adjust it um, back to the normal uh, times. Uh, they can also leave notes. So they can leave you a note with the uh, with the work that they were doing. So that just logged in five and a half hours. And then I can also drill in on things here. If I want to go look at the totals, I can look at totals for this person. Shows the jobs that they worked, uh, what days they worked them, and what the totals were, and any notes. I can also uh, add a new entry here from this screen as well if I need to. If I need to add one similar to what I just did on the previous screen. So if I need to just manually add it. Or I can make adjustments here if I need to. So if I need to make the time move up or down or add some notes here or change the project that they worked on because they worked on the, a different project, I can do that all from this uh, detail screen. I can also look at the time for all the employees for this particular week by clicking on the grand total for the week so far. Again, that just shows me a zoom in of who worked and what projects they worked. So all of the hours for these projects are going to accumulate with the project. So if I go back to my James Johnson project, which is the one that we were just working, and I hit refresh, we're probably going to see a few new actual hours show up. So that is all dynamically uh, tracking the hours as the employees clock them in and clock them out with that project. So you can see where you're at you know, with any project at any given time. So one, that's the way to track, one way to the track the time on the project. There's also uh, a way to track your expenses with the project as well. So if I scroll down on the project, there's a new entry down on the project called the expenses line. So with the expenses line, I can simply use the plus key there. Uh, I can change the date if I need to. I can enter in the vendor that the expenses are from. So maybe it's a sub, maybe it's a store, a uh, subcontractor, or maybe it's an employee that isn't punching in and punching out. A variety of different ways to do this. I'm going to say it's the paint store. I can put in the total dollars. Uh, $250 and taxes if I need to track sales tax on what I'm buying and then a description of what I bought and I could get as detailed here as I want uh, with that with that information and once I save that that's going to start accumulating my total expenses with the project so if I look at my profitability screen again I can now see that on materials I've racked up 250 of my estimated $779 of expenses so far. So what does all that all lead to? Uh, as we track the expenses like that and add, you know, continually adding them as the project progresses, let's just throw one more in there. Uh, let's say it's uh, Joe's Tools and it was $45. Fire that in. As I'm tracking that, you can see that my, my margin is actually getting smaller here because we're getting closer to what we estimated as we add the actual expenses to the project. So what we can do at any point in time is we can go look at a couple of great reports uh, to track this stuff. So one of the reports we can go to is the work scheduled report. Um, and I'll be curious to see how many people have actually discovered the work scheduled report. There's a couple new reports on the um, 
on the report screen. One of them is, uh, the, the main ones that are new are the work scheduled, work progress, and profitability reports. Very, very powerful reports. So work scheduled, what does that give you? What it gives you is all work orders that are that are scheduled during the period that you've got selected. So these are all work orders that are currently scheduled for this month, the month of March. And it shows us a bunch of inform great information here. It shows us the start and stop time that it's scheduled for, our start and stop date. It shows us who the supervisor is, gives us a link to the project and the client. So if we want to go zoom in on the project, we can do that really easily. And then it shows you our hours and sales information. So for hours, it shows us estimated hours and remaining hours. So if the estimated hours are zero, it simply means that we have not estimated any hours for that project. So we don't have any, haven't put in the estimated hours. If we do have estimated hours, then we can look at the remaining column. And in the remaining column, we can see how many hours we have left for that project. So if you see red, that's a problem. So red means we're over budget. We've already used more hours. Now in this case, the budget was zero, so um, that may or may not be a, a terrible thing. Um, in, however, on, on the second project in the list, uh, 44 Water Street, you can see we really haven't started working it yet because there's no actual hours that have been logged in at all. We've got the full amount of time remaining. And then on the third project down, you can see that we've worked about two thirds of the project. So we've got 34 hours left, uh, but we, we, out of the 114 that we estimated. So very key information. You can use this, this report, uh, this screen on a regular basis just to see where you're at with, the, with your project scheduled. And then in the invoiced column or the sales column, we have two things. We have the project total, so that's what we bid and, we, and got accepted. And then we have the uninvoiced amount. So this uninvoiced amount, in many cases, is what you can expect to invoice when you finish these projects. So this is a great indicator of uh, you know, what you can potentially expect to invoice assuming you finish these projects on time based on what they're currently scheduled for. So a really good guideline to know, you know where you're at with your invoicing. Next report is the work progress report. Work progress is just a little bit different. Um, the work progress report is going to show you any project in the work order state that is uh, scheduled and has any actual information at all. So this doesn't, doesn't matter when this project is scheduled, it, but it does matter that you've actually worked it or bought, expen you know, bought materials or, or paid expenses on it. Uh, or you've uh, invoiced it. So this, this report is a good indicator of all those active projects that you've got out there in the queue uh, and are, have in some way been worked, either by a deposit invoice or any actual uh, expenses or labor that you've applied to it. So th these two reports are extremely powerful to give you an idea of how the, the state of your work orders in terms of what's being worked and what's not being worked. Um, does everybody see the work progress report right now? Kayla, you might chime in for me there because I'm not going to really hear anybody else. We're okay, on the great. work progress report screen. Um, all right, my, my uh, go to webinar is definitely frozen. That's why I'm not seeing, wasn't seeing something. Got a little worried there. Okay, so um, again, Work, work scheduled, work progress reports, check them out. Very useful. This uninvoiced amount on the work schedule report can be a really, really good indicator of what you can expect to invoice. Uh, again, assuming every, all the projects get completed appropriately within that time frame. Uh, finally, uh, we have the profitability report. So the profitability report is for completed projects. So once you complete the project, it's fully paid, all done, then those will show up on the profitability report. So the profitability report shows a little bit more detail than uh, those other two reports. It shows your uh, sales, and then it shows estimated hours cost, profit and margin, and actual hours cost, profit and margin. And then finally it shows 
the difference column between your profit and margin. So how do we use this? A variety of ways. Uh, first of all, uh, to look at your pro projects, you can click on the column heading and it will sort it by whatever column you've selected. So this column we can look at, hey, uh, well, we hope we wish all our projects were 100% and I've probably got a lot more projects than should be at 100%. Uh, or we can look at, hey, what are these projects that have really low margin and why? And this can be a really powerful tool to drill into with your team and figure out what, you know, what went right or what went wrong on certain projects. It'll be a really good indicator. You know, if these things are coming up in the red all the time, that's obviously a red flag and time to go examine those projects, talk to the crew, talk to the estimator. Uh, this is a great tool to point up uh, organizational problems. Um, it, you know, it's not always the salesman, uh, or sometimes it's the salesperson who underbid a project. Sometimes it's the crew, something went wrong on the project, or things weren't clear to them, or they just didn't, you know, they just didn't make their production numbers on that particular project. But this report, it can be the basis for a really great conversation with your team. Uh, so you can everybody can get on the same page and understand what's going on on these projects. And of course, once you've pulled up one of these projects, you can always drill into the project and go look at the details for it. So this one's completed. We see the actuals. We can go into the profitability and see what's recorded for uh, our actuals versus our estimated. Where did you know where did this project go wrong? Uh, if it was expenses, uh, mainly materials, then we can go down and look at what those expense, you know, actual expenses were for the project. Um, in this particular case, there is a way to enter manual uh, expenses with the other columns. I uh, don't recommend it. It's That was prior to us having the ability to enter the expenses in detail, and that's a much preferred way of uh, entering in those expenses. So highly, highly uh, advocate using that. Let's go back to our um, profitability report again. So again, this report can become a really powerful tool for you. Uh, you're, you've got your detailed job costing if you follow these processes with the labor and materials. So at any time, you can really go back and drill in and see exactly what's going on with your projects, but in a very simple way. Just a couple of other ideas to show you here uh, in terms of some sample projects that I created. Um, you can create individual items. Uh, I've got a line item called, uh, I've got install small shrub is a line item that we created. And it's got a unit price of $45. You can see it's got a material cost of $15 per unit and a labor of 30 minutes per unit. And so to use this small shrub, I simply go in and enter in a quantity and install five small shrubs. It's going to cost $225 for my customer. And I save it. But again, by using, by using the material and labor costs, now I can get an estimated material and uh, hours for the project. So I have something to base my profitability and success on. And you can create items that have both co labor costs. Um, if you go to your item maintenance, I can show you that um, my shrub item, oops, go to all type. And I can go to my install small shrub, and it's simply a price of $45, 30 minutes to do each one, and $15 as my cost for each of the shrubs. So I might have a small, medium, and large shrub, or I might have a list of specific shrubs. You know, whatever your service happens to be, you would you know pick whatever that is, uh, and we can do similar uh, I concepts with uh, labor as well. So I've got some generic items like um, you know some generic materials like uh, let's see remodels materials. No, that's not a good example. Uh, paint is a good example. So I've got a paint that we sell by the gap, we buy by the gallon. It's thirty-five dollars a gallon, and it has a cost of sixteen dollars a gallon. So when we add that into a project, it's going to show up in our material list, and it's going to give us both the the you know price for the customer for every gallon we use, and it knows the cost, so we get our profitability. 
Uh, similarly, uh, we can do things with labor. So I can have a variety of different labor. I made these labor tradesmen item and labor helper. So a tradesman, the unit is an hour. It's 60 minutes per the hour and $75 per hour. So based on our cost, that's a 66% margin on the labor, which you can see right below the price. I did use, the, you'll notice in the item types, uh, there are three, three, four types. Generic is what um, is just a standard item. Uh, no, it doesn't show up in the material section or the labor section. Uh, but uh, material items and labor items and assemblies are used to create those those costed items that are going to help you to estimate your profitability and track your profitability. All right. Let's see another example here. Okay, so I think those are mostly my examples. Uh, we'll probably close out for the day, but as you know, you can always get a hold of us um, on on any of the uh, through the app. Uh, or you know, email or give us a call. Obviously, through the apps, the easiest way, but by just starting up a chat with us. I'd like to thank everybody for attending today, and uh, look forward to your ideas for uh, future webinars. And look forward to seeing at you at our next success webinar. Thanks everybody for coming, and we look forward to seeing you soon.